Good afternoon, children. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, children. Good afternoon. Yeah, we'll continue. We uh, started uh, working exercise 10.2 of circles from behind. From the last one, the 13th one, we finished this in the last class. Now over to the 12th one. A triangle ABC, you can see the figure alongside. A triangle ABC is drawn to circumscribe a circle. The triangle circumscribes the circle. Circumscribe meaning that is outside. So a triangle is drawn to circumscribe a circle of radius 4 centimeters. The radius of the circle is 4 centimeters such that the segments. So now you can see that the uh, sides of the triangle are tangential to the circle. Like here, the sides of the quadrilateral in question number 13, the sides of the quadrilateral ABCD are tangential to the circle. AB is a tangent at P, BC is a tangent at Q, CD is a tangent at R and DA is a tangent at S. So when in this in question number 13, where we have a quadrilateral circumscribing a circle, the sides of the quadrilateral are tangential. They are tangents to the circle. Similarly, when a triangle circumscribes a circle, the three sides of the triangle are tangential to the circle. So AB is a tangent, BC is a tangent at D, AC is also a tangent. So it's very important to mark off the points of contact. So let's call this uh, D, E and F. OK, so AB is a tangent at uh, F, BC is a tangent at D and AC is a tangent at E. OK. So such that the segments BD and uh, DC. So you can see that BD and DC. Uh, BD and uh, BD and DC are segments of which side? Such a simple question you should be answering spontaneously, but maybe you were not listening, meaning you were not focused on what I was talking. You were reading the question ahead. BD and DC are segments of. May audible or not children? BC, BC, very good, BC. BD and DC are segments of BC. OK, so BD and DC into which BC is divided by the point of contact D are of lens 8 centimeter. So BD is 8 centimeter and DC is 6 centimeter. You can see that it's marked. Find the sides A, B and A, C. So we know B, C is 8 plus 6, 14. B, C is 8 plus 6, 14. We need to find the length of the sides A, B and A, C. So first mark of the points of contact children uh, E and F then join join OE and OF also join also join AO the vertex of the the vertex A to O the vertex B to O and the vertex C to O. Uh, we also know that uh, by the theorem radius perpendicular to tangent this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees because OD is the radius. OD is the radius. BC is the tangent. So 90 degrees. OF radius, AB tangent, 90 degrees. OE radius, AC tangent, 90 degrees. So now we have divided the whole triangle. We have divided, don't write. We have divided the whole triangle ABC into three smaller triangles into three smaller triangles. So triangle uh, AOC, triangle BOC, and triangle AOB. Correct? 
We have divided the whole triangle ABC into three smaller triangles. AOC, BOC, and AOB. Now, we need to construct an equation. So we know that the sum of the areas of these three triangles, that is area of triangle AOC plus area of triangle BOC plus area of triangle AOB is equal to the area of the whole triangle ABC. OK. Now, uh, by the uh, theorem, tangents from an XL point of the circle are equal. A, now let's look at the points uh, here in this figure. O, O is the point inside the circle. D, E and F. D, E and F. They are points on the circle. A, B, C are points outside the circle. O is a point inside the circle and that's the center of the circle. D, E and F are points on the circle. A, B, C are points outside the circle. Now from the external points A, B and C, we have two tangents to the circle. Tanishka, name the tangents from A. Quickly, Tanishka, name the tangents from A. From A, C, C, B and A, B. Wrong. Uh, Project, name the tangents from A. Name the tangent segments from A. Tanishka, you can try again. Name the tangent segments from A. Tanishka. From A and OD. No. Project. Um, e and AF. No, no, I was asking Prajit. Prajit? Um, e. Okay. AF. Okay, Sashank, you wanted to say something? Yes? Mom, I said the same. Uh, repeat. Repeat. Mom, I said the same. Yeah, yeah, you tell me what the same. Ah. A e and AF. A E and AF, yes. So A E and AF are tangent segments from A. Tanishka, tangent segments from B. From B F and B D. And tell me the other one. What is my next question and what's the answer for that? And tangents from C, C E and C D. Very good. Tangents from C, C E and C D. Very good, Tanishka. All right. So now, so since uh, tangents from an external point of the circle are equal, uh, uh, Tanishka, if CD is six centimeters, which is the other line segment which will also be six centimeters? If CD is six centimeters, which is the other line segment which will also be six centimeters? CE. CE also will be six because tangents from an external point of the circle are equal. Then if BD is eight, which is the other line segment which is eight? BF is, BF is 8. Now, class, since we do not know AE and AF, we'll call that as X. Because we know that AE is equal to AF. We know that AE is equal to AF, but we do not know the length of AE or AF. So let it be X centimeters each or anything, any variable, A, B, C, D, whatever variable. Mom, I have a doubt. Yes, Madhumita. If BC is uh, 14 centimeters, then BA should also be 14 centimeters. No, ma'am. If B, if yeah, yeah, that will come. Yes. If uh, come again. BC is 14 centimeters, so BA is ah. also 14 centimeters. No, 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 no. Because they are much from the same external point. No, no, no. That that you cannot say because because. From the external point to the point of contact is the tangent segment, not beyond that. From the external point to the point of contact is a tangent segment. That's all. Only that is equal to from the external point to the point of contact here. Beyond that, we cannot say. If BC will be equal to BA, we cannot say. They need not be equal. The lengths of the tangent segments from the external point of the circle are equal. B is the external point. B is the external point. So BD is a tangent segment because D is the point of contact. BD will be equal to BF. That's all we know. BC need not be equal to BA. 
C and A are some point. C is some point on the tangent. A is some other point on the tangent. How can we say that BC is equal to BA? When we say tangents, yeah, when we say tangents are equal, tangent segments. And which is the tangent segment? From the external point to the point of contact. So BD and BF. Understood, ma'am. Yeah. So what will be the area of triangle AOC half into base? What's the base uh, AC into the altitude OE? Because it's perpendicular, no? It's perpendicular. One minute, let me write it like, oh, so my God. <laughs> Radius is 4, so this is 4. Radius is 4, it's given. Radius is 4 is given. Okay, now area of triangle uh, AOC. AOC is equal to half into base AC into height BF. Because 90 degrees, no? Radius perpendicular to tangent. 90, 90, 90. Half into AC into OF. So that is equal to half into uh, X plus 6 into 4. So 2 1s are 2 twos are. So it will be 2X plus 12. 2 into X plus 6, which is equal to 2X plus 12. Is this right, children? Next, Diliban, tell me the area of triangle A, uh, BOC. Sri Ranjan, area of triangle BOC, half into yeah, Dilipan, yes, half into BC into BOC, half into BC into OC, BC into OC. yeah, that is equal to half into half into x plus 8. BC is x plus 8. Can we BC is x plus 8. Sri Ranjan? How much is BC? Dilipan, how much is BC? 14. 14, 14 centimeters. 14. 6 plus 8, 14. Into, yes. how much is OD? Oh, OD, sorry. Sorry, sir. Not OC. I'm so sorry. Half into Four, BC into OD. Yeah, oh. 4. Yeah. So, how much is it, Ranjan? 2 ones are 2 twos, sir. Twenty-eight. 28 centimeters square. Now, Ranjan, continue. What is area of triangle uh, AOB? Half into AB into uh, OA. OA. See, this is the triangle. Okay, this is the triangle. Which is the altitude inside the triangle? Ma'am, OA. Oh. No, no, no. OE. OE. The altitudes are in green. 
the altitudes are in green name all the three altitudes ranjan ma'am of oe od of oe od very good uh, which is the base of triangle obc obc which is the base and bc yeah correct oab which is the base ab and oac which is the base ac yeah okay thank you children so class uh, uh, half base into height half into base is ab into the altitude is oe oe so that is half into uh, x plus 6 Into four, so two ones are two twos are. Ah, uh, two into x plus six, two into x plus six, so it will be two x plus twelve. Two into x is two x, six twos are twelve, so two x plus twelve centimeters square. Now, what will be the area of the whole triangle ABC? Area of triangle ABC, the whole triangle ABC. So we'll have to use Heron's formula. We'll have to use Heron's formula. So, how to apply Heron's formula? Um, it's not x plus six. It's x plus a uh, eight, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've gone wrong. Is it? Let me check once again. Yeah, yeah, one minute. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yes, I'm sorry. This one, right? X plus eight. Correct. Sorry, sorry. So half into x plus eight it will be. So two x plus sixteen. Is this right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now what is area of triangle uh, um, ABC? So semi perimeter. Semi perimeter of triangle ABC. Okay. So this is one part. Now in triangle ABC, uh, AB is equal to AB is equal to x plus eight. BC is equal to fourteen. AC is equal to x plus six. So semi perimeter is equal to add all the three sides and divide by two. Add all the three sides and divide by two. Semi perimeter is equal to perimeter by two. S is equal to a plus b plus c by two. So that is two x plus twenty eight by two. You can take out two common. And you'll get x plus fourteen by two. Two gets cancelled, so x plus fourteen is a semi perimeter. Understood, children? Heron's formula, ninth yep. standard. Yeah, calculating the area of a scalene triangle. Calculating the area of a scalene any triangle, in fact, when you know only the sides. When do we use Heron's formula? Heron's formula is used to find the area of a triangle. When you know only the three sides of the triangle. Now area, area of triangle ABC is equal to square root of s into s minus a into s minus b into s minus c square units. So that is equal to square root of s is x plus fourteen into s minus a. What are the sides? X plus eight, fourteen, and X plus six. A, B, C are these. A, B, C. These are the sides of the triangle. A, B, C. Semi perimeter is X plus fourteen. S into S minus A. S. Minus A. What is A? X plus eight. X plus eight. So it will be like minus X minus eight because. S minus. Okay, let me write it. This is S children. S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. S we found here. X plus fourteen. Then into S minus A. S you can see X plus fourteen minus A. One side. 
anything can be abc nothing like ab abc any order you can take so i have taken a as x plus a so you can see s minus a then uh, b is 14 so you can see there and c is x plus 6 Am I right, children? Shall I proceed? Yes, ma'am. OK, so X plus 14 into X plus 14 minus X minus 8. X plus 14 minus 14. Uh, X plus 14 minus X minus 6. So square root of X plus 14. Into what is this? This gets canceled. And 14 minus 8 is 6. I don't think we need such a big square root. 6. 14 cancels, so into x. This is how much? 8. Correct, children? So this is nothing but square root of uh, 6, 8, 48. 6, 8, 48 into x into x plus 14. You can just rearrange it like, uh, rearrange and write it like this. You can just rearrange and write it like this. Now, 48 uh, is actually what 16 threes are, right? 16 threes are 48. So you can write 48 as 16 into 3 into x into x plus 14. So you uh, 16 comes out as 4. That's all. Even if you stop here, it's fine, children. You don't have to. Do, OK, let's stop here. One minute. You can. This is optional. This one, this step is optional, children. 4 and then 3x into x plus 4. This is optional. You want to write, otherwise it's okay. You can write 16 as, uh, sorry, you can write uh, 48 as 16 into 3, and 16 comes out of the square root as 4. So we have 4 into square root of 3x into x plus 14 square units, or centimeter square, centimeter square. This is the area of triangle ABC. Okay. We found the area of triangle ABC using Heron's formula. So now coming to the equation. So what's the equation? Area of triangle. Area of triangle. Uh, what's the order I have written here? AOC, BOC, AOB. AOC. Yeah. Because we divided the whole triangle, we divided the whole triangle into three smaller triangles like this. This is one triangle. This is the second triangle. This is the third triangle. Area of triangle one plus area of triangle two plus area of triangle three is equal to the area of the whole triangle ABC. That's what we have written here. Area of triangle one plus area of triangle two plus area of triangle three is equal to the area of the whole triangle ABC. So what is that? Uh, what is the area of triangle AOC? AOC 2x plus 12, then 28, and then 2x plus 16. 2x plus 8, I forgot. Then 2x plus 16. Huh? So difficult to remember. 2x plus 12, 28, and 16. Yeah, children, please check. See here. This is the area of one triangle 2x plus 12, then 28, and then 2x plus 16. So you can see here 2x plus 12, 28, and 2x plus 16 is equal to uh, 
So this one, I've written this. I told you, if you want, you can use this. Otherwise, you can use this itself. Square root of 48x into x plus 14. Square root of 48x into x plus 14. Understood so far, children? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, children. So now, um, 2x and 2x is 4x plus uh, 28 and 12, 40, 56 is equal to square root of uh, 48x into x plus 14. So you can take out four common here. x plus 14 is equal to square root of 48x into x plus 14. Now we have to square on both the sides in order to get rid of the square root symbol. We need to get rid of the square root symbol. So we have to square on both the sides. Squaring on both sides. So squaring on both the sides we get 4 into x plus 14, the whole square is equal to square root of the whole square. So this becomes 16 into x plus 14, the whole square is equal to, here the square root is eliminated. So 48x into x plus 14. Tell me if I'm clear till here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, so we'll uh, get this term also to the uh, left hand side. So it will be 16 into x plus 14, the whole square minus. 48x into x plus 14 is equal to 0. Now, what is common? There are two terms. There are two terms. There are two expressions. Okay, so what is common? 16 and 48, 16 is common. x plus 14, the whole square, x plus 14. So x plus 14 is common. This is common between the two terms. Between 16 and 48, 16 is common. X plus 14, the whole square, and X plus 14, X plus 14 is common. Like between A square and A, A is common. Like that. So 16 and X plus 14 is outside. So you'll have to multiply by another X plus 14 so that we get the product as 16 into X plus 14, the whole square, the first term. Then this minus sign as it is, 16 into 3 is 48. And that X we need, that X is not there. So this X and X plus 14 is already there outside is equal to zero. See, it's like uh, this. Supposing you had um, 16a square minus uh, 48ab is equal to 0. So between 16 and 48, 16 is common. Between a square and a, a is common. So open bracket. 16a into a is 16a square minus 16 into 3 is 48. A, in, a is already there. A, a is already there. So that b you should put is equal to 0. In the same way, 16 into x plus 14 is common, but we need to get the product as 16 into x plus 14, the whole square. So there's like 16a here, but you need to get 16a square. So into x plus 14. Then this is the second term. This should be the product. What do you have outside? 16 into x plus 14. So there is 16, but 16 threes are is 48. There's 16 outside. And this is also there outside. X plus 14 is also there. And 16 is there. So 3x. Inside the bracket, you will get 3x. Sixteen into x plus fourteen. When you simplify this, you'll get x plus fourteen minus three x. 
is equal to 0. The 16 will come for division. So x plus 14 into uh, 14 minus 2x because x minus 3x is minus 2x is equal to 0 by 16. So x plus 14 into 14 minus 2x is equal to 0. So the product is 0. So either x plus 14 is 0, then x will be minus 14 or 14 minus 2x is equal to 0. 14 is equal to 2x. x is equal to 14 by 2, which is 7. So now what is x? x is the length of a line segment here. What is x? As the length of the line segment AF and AE, and it cannot be negative. x cannot be negative. x is equal to minus 14. x cannot be negative because it's the length of a line segment. So this is not possible. That means x is 7. The value of x is 7. If x is 7, the question is to find AB and AC. What is AB and AC? AB and AC. What is AB? AB is x plus 8. So 7 plus 8, 15 centimeters. And what is AC? AC is x plus 6. 7 plus 6, 13 centimeters. Very, very simple the answer. <clears throat> Uh, you just have to be very careful while uh, calculating. See, like I wrote, um, uh, you know, a six instead of eight. And Sashank uh, told me at the right time, if nobody had noticed, uh, then it's after coming to the end of it, it's so difficult to make out where we have gone wrong. It's frustrating also. You'll have to come back and check from the beginning. So some such a lengthy, you need to be very careful from the beginning. Small sums like one or two mark sums, fine. You'll have only four steps. It's easy. You can have that state of that good state of mind to check the answer. But lengthy answers like this, you'll have to spend time again from the beginning to identify where you have gone wrong. So substitute carefully. It's just it's very simple. It's all about eighth and ninth standard. It's more about eighth standard, the calculation part. So how do you remember this answer? It's just an idea which you have to remember. So here you have to divide the whole triangle into three smaller triangle, three smaller triangles. Find the area of the three small triangles using the formula half base into height. Have that. Then find the area of the whole triangle using the for using Heron's formula. Now you construct the equation. What is the equation? The, area, the sum of the areas of the three small triangles is equal to the area of the big triangle. And then after working a few steps, you'll have to square on both the sides because you have to get rid of the square root symbol. Then bring all the terms to one side, common factor and all that. You get two values for x. One is negative, one is positive. Negative is not possible. Positive is 7. And we find a, b and a, c. Very, very, very simple children. Believe me, it's very simple. And very important. There's nothing to revise in this. Yeah, please go through and let me know if I have to clarify anything. Now, that was a very nice question asked by Madhumita. She asked why BC cannot be equal to BA. So, Remember that the length of the, the tangent segments from an external point of the circle are equal. The tangent segments are, how do you identify the tangent segment? From the external point to the point of contact. That's all, not beyond that. From the external point, so B to D, the point of contact is D. Then from B to E, because the point of contact is E. So BD is equal to BE, that's all. Beyond that, we don't know, we can't say. They can be equal. They need not be equal. You can't say. The length of the tangent segments BD is equal to BE. Nothing beyond BD and BE. So that shows that question itself shows that. She was really into the answer, meaning all of you are listening children. I'm not uh, I'm not saying anything. All of you are listening, but that question was very important. And by that I've answered the whole class.
All right, children. This is calculating area of the triangle ABC using Heron's formula. Maybe we'll just do it once again, one minute. But a little faster. I'm not drawing that circle inside. Radius four, okay. I'm not drawing the circle inside. This radius is given four centimeters everywhere. And this is six and this is eight. So this is six and this is uh, X. This is X and this is uh, eight. A, B, C. I think this was D and we marked this, whatever. This is O. This is O. Yeah. So you can even find the area of the triangle ABC first, the big triangle ABC. So uh, area of uh, triangle ABC, calculating area of triangle ABC. So A is equal to, so you can also write it like this. Uh, AB, AB, side AB is equal to X plus eight centimeters. BC is equal to, uh, 6 plus 8, which is 14 centimeters. Please watch. AC is equal to uh, X plus 6 centimeters. So what is semi-perimeter? Or the sum of the three sides, AB plus BC plus AC divided by 2. So X plus 8 plus X plus 14. Sorry, X plus 8 plus X plus 6 plus 14 divided by 2. So it is 2X plus 28 by 2. When you take out two common, you get X plus 14. By two, two cancel, so X plus 14. This is semi-perimeter. Area of the triangle will be area of triangle ABC. Area of triangle ABC is equal to Heron's formula square root of S into S minus one side AB, then semi-perimeter minus second side BC, semi-perimeter minus third side AC. So that is square root of S, X plus 14 into S minus A. S is this one. This is S minus AB. AB is X plus 8 into, into into this is S minus uh, BC. BC is 14, so minus 14. Into, into meaning open a square bracket. S, X plus 14 minus AC, X plus 6. So what do you get? Square root of X plus 14. Then opening the bracket, minus X minus 8 you will get. Minus X and plus X gets cancelled and 14 minus 8 is 6. Minus 14 plus 14 gets cancelled, so only X. Uh, X minus X will get cancelled on opening the bracket. 14 minus 6 is 8. So you can have this as 6 8 the 48 into X into X plus 14. So this is how we found, find the area of the whole triangle ABC. Then the area of the smaller triangles, you know, half base into height. The equation is 
the sum of the areas of the three small triangles is equal to the area of the whole triangle. Then you have to square on both the sides, get rid of the square root. Then take this expression also to the uh, left hand side. And you're factorizing, actually this is factorizing. So on, upon factorizing, we get x is minus 14, x is 7. Negative not possible, so 7. And hence, we find the sides uh, A, B, and A, C. Just give me a minute, children. Read the question. Class, use the emoji, raise your hand. Rajit, Madhmita, Raja, Krishmi, Rakshita, Diliban, Florentina, Raghavi, Sri Ranjan, Sashan. Ma'am, I couldn't raise the hand. All right, darling. Okay, Tanishka. Yes, Ritika. Anshan. Okay, so when I started the meeting, uh, there were only 10 of us. Who are those three who joined uh, later? No, I'm concerned if you missed any part of the class in the beginning. Three students who joined late. Ma'am, I joined 10 minutes late, ma'am. I saw the message late. Ma'am, I also joined late. Raja, okay. All right. Okay, I'll share the recording. Please watch the initial minutes of the class which you missed, children. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So here again, uh, the sides of the quadrilateral are tangential to the circle. The sides of the quadrilateral are tangential to the circle. Uh, Florentina? Ma'am? Um. Yeah, name the points of contact. Name all the points of contact. R. Yeah, quickly. Yes, go on. R. 
RSQP. RSQ and P are the points of contact. Good. Okay. Now, uh, A is an external point, and can I write uh, AP is equal to AS? Is AP is equal to is AP equal to AS children? Tell me all the results similar to this. Tell me all the other results similar to this. AP is equal to AS then. BP is equal to BQ. Okay. CR is equal to QC. CR is equal to CQ then. DR is equal to DS. DR is equal to DS. Very good. Because these are the four external points. A, B, C, D are the points outside the circle. These are the points outside the circle. A, B, C and D are points outside the circle. And we know that from an external point, exactly two tangents can be drawn. And the tangent segments are equal in length. So AP is equal to AS. BP is equal to BQ. CR is equal to CQ. DR is equal to DS. Okay. Now we need to get the result AB. We need to prove that. We need to prove that AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. Okay. Now what is AB made up of? What is AB made up of? AP and BP, right? Yes, ma'am. And what is CD made up of? CR and? CQ, ma'am. CR and? DR. DR. Now see children, you have to get these lines. So see, uh, I think you'll understand if I write. So I'm going to write like this here. AP, BP, CR, DR is equal to, is equal to, is equal to, is equal to. Because uh, AP plus BP, AP plus BP I know is a, will give me AB. And CR plus DR I know will give me CD. Now fill this children, fill this one. What is AP equal to? AS. BP is equal to? BQ. CR is equal to? CQ. And DR is equal to? ECS. Okay, now add. What is AP plus? Uh, when you add, you will get AP plus BP plus CR plus DR uh, is equal to AS plus BQ plus CQ plus DS. When you add the LHS and RHS. But you know that AP plus BP is what? AB plus CR plus DR is CD is equal to AS plus DS. AS plus DS is AD plus BQ plus CQ is BC. Hence proved. Understand, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So here the uh, theorem uses tangents from the external point to the circle. Tangents meaning the tangent segments from an external point to the circle are equal. So you start like this because you want to get AB plus CD equal to. You want to get AB plus CD. AB plus CD is equal to. So you start with what is AB made up of? AP and BP and CD. What is CD made up of? CR and DR. Write this, then put equal to and complete it. So AP is equal to, don't write AP is equal to BP. AP is equal to what? Come again. AS. 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 BP is equal to? BQ. BQ. Then? CD. CQ. Mm, CQ, then? DS. DS. On yeah. adding, what will you get? AP plus BP plus CR plus DR is equal to AQ, I'm sorry, AS AS plus BQ plus CQ plus DS. Then on adding, 
AP plus BP is AB. AB. Yeah. CR and DR together with CD is equal to AS and BS together. AS and DS. AD. AD. AD plus BC. Yeah. Yeah. AB2 and CQ together is BC. So hence proof. Hence proof. So uh, what is this result? You they meaning you must remember this in words. When a quadrilateral circumscribes a circle, the sum of the opposite sides are equal. Some of the opposite sides are equal. So you know what? They'll give you they'll give you this one. They'll give you a figure like this. They'll not give all this. All this will not be given. They'll just give you this figure. And they'll say that this one is uh, some 12 centimeters. This is uh, 15 centimeters. And this one is uh, some say something like 14 centimeters. How much is AD? They'll ask you to find AD. So you must write this result. Because we know that in a figure like this, if a quadrilateral circumscribes a circle, we know that the sum of the opposite sides are equal. The sum of the opposite sides are equal. What are the opposite sides? AB and CD are opposite sides. Their sum is equal to the sum of the opposite sides, BC and AD. The sum of, see, this is the sum of one pair of opposite sides. This is the sum of the other pair of opposite sides. The sum of the opposite sides are equal. Not always, only when a quadrilateral circumscribes a circle. Children, am I clear, children? Yes, yes. ma'am. I'll, I'll be happy even if I hear a no. You can say no as, as loudly as you say as yes. Somebody say no, I'll repeat it. When a quadrilateral circumscribes a circle, so a figure like this, the sum of the opposite sides will be equal, not in any quadrilateral, only if the quadrilateral is like this outside a circle. It circumscribes a circle, then the sum of the opposite sides are equal. So how do we write the sum of the, how do we write this result? Write the opposite sides on either sides. Put an equal to sign, write the opposite sides. Opposite sides are A, B and C, D. Opposite sides are B, C, B, C and A, D. The sum of the opposite sides. This is the this is the result. So now fill. How much is AB? 12. Plus how much is BC? 15. Then uh, CD, this is 14, is equal to, and then this plus AD. Now you should work this. So you'll get 26 minus 15 is equal to AD. AD is equal to 11 centimeters. AD is equal to 11 centimeters. So this result you'll have to remember. You'll have to remember this result because you will have numerical questions based on this result. One mark, MCQs. When a quadrilateral circumscribes a circle, the sum of the opposite sides are equal. AB plus CD is equal to BC plus AD. Okay, now, here children, here it is given that um, <clears throat> ABCD is just a quadrilateral. Okay, here it's given that ABCD is a quadrilateral. Supposing ABCD is a parallelogram. Supposing it's given it's a parallelogram. Okay, supposing it's given it's a parallelogram. Then what will happen? AB plus CD. What is AB plus CD, children? In a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal, right? In a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. So AB plus CD. Meaning opposite sides are equal. So AB plus CD is nothing but AB plus AB because opposite sides are equal. And AD plus BC is nothing but AD plus AD or BC plus BC because opposite sides are equal. Anything you can write BC plus BC or AD plus AD. So that will give you what AB twice AB is equal to twice AD. So AB is equal to AD. So you get adjacent sides are equal now. See here AB is equal to AD. And recall in a parallelogram when adjacent sides are equal, it's a rhombus. In a parallel, because in a parallelogram, only opposite sides are equal. In a parallelogram, only opposite sides are equal. 
But if adjacent sides are equal, if if you can prove that in a parallelogram, adjacent sides are equal. That means all the sides are equal. So if they give you that a parallelogram ABCD circumscribes a parallelogram ABCD circumscribes a circle. Prove that ABCD is a rhombus. So same proof you have to do. And you will get AB is equal to AD. Adjacent sides are equal. Therefore, it's a rhombus. OK, first thing, see uh, from one answer, we, are, we have learned quite a few. See, the first thing is how to get this result. AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. That one is by using the theorem. Tangents from an external point of the circle are equal. That is one thing. Then I told you remember the result because you will be given uh, numbers or uh, you will be given the sides of the quadrilateral. Any three sides of this quadrilateral. And you will have to find the fourth missing side using this result. MCQ. Then after that I told you in the same question instead of quadrilateral ABCD, if they give you parallelogram ABCD, the same result will hold good. The same result will hold good. Parallelogram ABCD, so you'll get the same thing. AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. Same result you'll get, but you can proceed with this. AB plus CD can be written as AB plus AB or CD plus CD because opposite sides are equal. AD plus BC can be written as AD plus AD or BC plus BC. So you will get like this twice AD is equal to uh, twice AB is equal to twice AD. Two gets cancelled on both the sides. AB is equal to AD. So you get adjacent sides are equal. AB is equal to AD. Adjacent sides are equal. Therefore, it's a rhombus. That is this proof, children. That is the proof for this one. Prove that a parallelogram circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. Prove that a parallelogram circumscribing a circle is a rhombus because a parallel, a perfect parallelogram cannot circumscribe. See here. You know how to see this is a parallelogram, right? This one is a parallelogram. Correct. This one is a parallelogram. Yes or no, children? Not a parallelogram. Yes, ma'am. Very wide, you know. So yeah, we all know that this is a parallelogram. Now, how can you draw a circle touching all the four sides? Can you have a circle touching all the four sides? No, you cannot have a circle touching all the four sides. So if a circle, if a circle is inscribed like this, then it has to be a rhombus. It, it's a parallelogram, but it's a rhombus. It's not. It, it cannot be just a parallelogram. It has to be a rhombus. Mom, it can also be a square. It can also be a square. For that, it should be a rectangle. See, we have parallelograms. Rhombus. Rectangle. Square. In a parallelogram and a rectangle, you can draw a circle touching only one pair of opposite sides. Here you can draw a circle touching these two sides. Here also you can draw a circle touching these two sides, only one pair of opposite sides. You cannot draw a circle. See, supposing you have a rectangle of length 15 centimeters and breadth 8 centimeters. You cannot draw a circle touching all the four sides of this rectangle. Is what I'm trying to say. Am I right? Can you imagine that? Yes, ma yes, ma'am. If you have a rectangle of length 15 centimeters and breadth 8 centimeters, or imagine a still a smaller one, your scale. Imagine your scale. Your scale is a rectangle. Okay, your scale is a rectangle. Now draw a circle. You can draw a circle like this, touching the opposite sides, one pair of opposite sides. No, you should draw a circle touching all the four sides. That's not possible. You cannot draw a circle like that. If it is a rectangle only, meaning it's not a square, it's a rectangle only, then you cannot draw a circle touching all the four sides. If the rectangle is a square, if that rectangle is a square, yeah, then you can draw a circle touching all the four sides. 
a square is a rectangle. A square is a rectangle. A rectangle is not a, uh, all rectangles are not squares. Similarly, if it's if it's only a parallelogram, it's not a rhombus. If it's only a parallelogram, you cannot draw a circle touching all the four sides. You cannot draw a circle touching all the four sides if it's only a parallelogram and not a pa rhombus. If it's a rhombus, yeah, then you can draw a circle touching all the four sides. It's possible. Only a rhombus and a square can circumscribe a circle or a circle can be inscribed only in a rhombus or a square. If you want the, you know, the uh, quadrilateral to touch all the four, if you want the circle to touch all the four sides of the uh, quadrilateral, if you want the circle to touch all the four sides of the quadrilateral, then the quadrilateral has to be a par, uh, rhombus or a square. It has to be a rhombus or a square. Well, every rhombus is a parallelogram and every square is a parallel uh, rectangle. And a square is a parallelogram also. A square is also a rhombus. A square is a parallelogram. This is the hierarchy. Parallelogram, uh, then parallelogram gives rise to rhombus, rectangle, square. A parallelogram in which adjacent sides are equal is a rhombus. A rectangle in which adjacent sides are equal is a square. Okay, so the pr same proof for this children. Prove that a parallelogram circumscribing a rhombus. Oh my God. Prove that the parallelogram circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. Same thing. Okay, you'd have to draw a diagram like this. And use the property of tangents and same thing. Okay. Like what I explained here. So finished 8 and 11. Okay. Now coming to the 10th one. We are doing exercise 10.2 from NCRT from behind. All the sums from behind. We finished 13. We finished 13 in the last class. Today we started with 12. Then we just finished uh, 8. Using 8, I finished uh, 11. Using 8, I finished 11 because they're similar. I finished 11. Now to the 10th one. Prove that the angle between the two tangents drawn from an external point to a circle. Okay, let's draw that. Circle. Tangents from an external point. This is the external point. Prove that the ta Oh my God, what's wrong today? Prove that the angle between the two tangents. So these are the two tangents. This is the angle between the two tangents drawn from an external point of the circle is supplementary to the angle subtended by the line segment joining the points of contact to the center. So this is the center of the circle. These are the points of contact. So join the points of contact to the center. Supposing we call this A. Uh, sorry, P, A, and B. O, A. O, A is the radius that you know, but how is it described here? O, A is a line segment joining the point of contact to the center. That's nothing but the radius. O, A is a line segment joining the point of contact A to the center O. O, B is also a line segment joining the point of contact B to the center row and this angle between those two line segments. You must prove that these are supplementary. You must prove that angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180. 1 plus 2 is equal to 180. One angle is angle between the two tangents drawn from an external point to a circle. The other angle is angle subtended by 
the line by the line segment by the line segments actually joining the points of contact at the center so this one these are the two angles this is the extent point p pb and p are the two tangents and angle 2 is the angle between the two tangents oa and ob are the line segments joining the center of the circle to the points of contact a and b an angle 1 is the angle between these two line segments oa is one line segment ob is the other line segment this is the angle between the two line segments you need to prove that angle 1 is equal to angle 2 so we know that this is 90 and this is 90 so in quadrilateral in quadrilateral a o b p a o b p Now, supposing this is 3 and 4 we know that angle 3 4 and 4 is 90 degrees because radius perpendicular to tangent so in quadrilateral ao bp angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 is equal to 1 oh, sorry 360 360 the sum of the four angles of a quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees angle 1 plus angle 2 plus 3 is 90 degrees 4 is also 90 degrees is equal to 360 So angle one plus angle two is equal to ninety ninety one eighty three sixty minus one eighty is one eighty. So we prove that angle one plus angle two is one eighty. That means the angles are supplementary. Simple children. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Ah, uh, so children, now uh, we have lot of test pending. Ah, uh, we have completed uh, only on statistics. I was able to give you the test on time. The other uh, chapters we have not taken in test so far. So next week is going to be full of tests for you. Start preparing from now. Um, uh, the next chapter we did was real numbers. after that uh, polynomials pair of linear equations uh, circles we will not take the test now mm. and quadrilaterals also not quadrilaterals uh, quadratic equations also we have just started so no test on uh, quadratic equations uh, no test on circles uh, the chapters which we have finished um, statistics also we will take a test on statistics so revise statistics revise real numbers Re uh, revise uh, polynomials, uh, revise linear equations. These four chapters. So next week uh, you will mostly have only the special class in the morning. The next uh, the classes on uh, Thursday evening and Saturday evening you will not have because during that time you will be taking up the tests online. So you will mostly not have the test. I'm sorry. No, I don't know why a uh, lot of uh, tongue slipping today. <laughs> so the regular classes uh, next week thursday and saturday we might not have because if i assign exams for you you will be taking up the exams at that time however we might go on with the special classes in the afternoon from 12:15 to 1:30 this is a very small duration so maybe we'll continue this i'll let you know i'll text you mm. but we will not have the regular classes so i'm uh, working on your uh, exam papers i'll let you know when i assi uh, assign the exams so start uh, preparing in this order children uh, statistics uh, first revise statistics first so there'll be one one test paper which has everything on statistics only one paper i'll make on statistics having every part of uh, statistics in it then real numbers you will have again uh reason assertion reasoning paper separately mcq separately case study based question separately and then uh, the long answer type question separately so four exams you will take on real numbers mcqs assertion reasoning case study based question questions and uh, the long answer type questions same with polynomials all the four exams you will have and linear equations also all the four you will have so all these exams i have to uh, schedule for you because 
uh, I'm planning to uh, schedule the uh, parents mentor mentee meet uh, before uh, July uh, June 5th before your school reopens. So by then I should uh, be able to tell your parents that uh, we have also taken the assessments. OK, so. Yeah, so next week will be full of that. Start preparing. Do your exams well. See, I take a lot of time to prepare those papers. It's not that they're just there in the Internet and I just schedule it. I spend so much time picking the questions, preparing the paper, then uploading it, and it's all time consuming. So I have that time apart from my household chores, taking care of my children, housekeeping, everything I have. I find time for your uh, exams. So as students, you should not have excuses because now you're on your vacations. The whole day you have at your disposal to study. OK. So that's about the plan for next week. Uh, today is Friday, so tomorrow, the regular class tomorrow, children. If supposing I start because there are so many chapters, no, uh, and um, we have to start the exam. So supposing I, I uh, if I have not prepared any test paper, if nothing is available for you in the portal, then we'll have the regular class tomorrow. Supposing it's ready, you might have your statistics exam. Supposing I told you the first exam will be on statistics. Supposing I finish preparing the paper on statistics and I upload it in the portal, then tomorrow evening instead of the class, you'll have the exam. So that means by tomorrow, uh, six o'clock, you should be ready with statistics in full. From today, start revising statistics. So tomorrow evening, if supposing the paper is ready, then you will not have the regular class. You will be writing the test on statistics online. If you prepare the paper, then we'll have the regular class. So in whatever it is, I'll update on WhatsApp for you. But you start preparing for statistics. So from Sunday like that regularly, you can expect the uh, exam should be to be scheduled. So one paper on statistics, then next is real numbers. I told you I'm repeating next is real numbers. In the order we did the chapters. Next real numbers, four papers you will have. Next, uh, polynomials, four papers. Uh, next, uh, linear equations, four papers. All this, I have to finish it by uh, Saturday, next Saturday. Today is Friday, no? So the next Saturday. See, I'm not rushing. I'm telling you now. So start preparing from now. Don't tell me you didn't have time to prepare. Real numbers is a very simple chapter. Statistics already have taken up the exams. You just have to revise one chapter. Then real numbers. So start preparing. Yeah. So you will not have exams on uh, quadratic equations and circles now. So by uh, the uh, meet online meet, I want to complete the exams on statistics, real numbers, polynomials and linear equations. Yes, children. <clears throat> so we finished the 10th one. So from behind 13, 12, 11, 10, we finished. Yeah. Okay. I'll just finish this nine in the middle and wind up the session for today. Yeah. So this again is very simple, children. <clears throat> it's all using congruency, which we know very well from nine standard. In the given figure, xy and x dash y dash are two parallel tangents to a circle. Yes, one thing you have to remember is if the tangents are parallel, if the tangents are parallel, if this tangent is parallel to this tangent, that means that means their points of contact. So, so L, L and M, L is a tangent to the circle at A. M is also a tangent to the circle at B. See, it's going into the circle. Don't mind that. It's a tangent only. It's not going inside the circle. L and M are tangents to the circle at the points A and B. And they're parallel tangents. If they are parallel tangents, that means the points of contact A and B, the points of contact A and B are the endpoints of a diameter. They will be the endpoints of a diameter. That means AOB will be the diameter. OK, let me put it this way. 
tangent tangent point of contact say p point of contact q center of the circle now these two tangents are parallel to each other these two tangents are parallel to each other points of contact p and q if you try to join pq if you try to join pq it will pass through the center if you try to join pq it will pass through the center you don't have to make it pass through the center it will automatically pass through the center because pq will be the diameter p and q will be the ends of the diameter because the tangents are parallel circle tangent tangent parallel tangents parallel tangents point of contact point of contact x y if you try to join x y it will pass through the center of the circle if you try to join x y x and y it will pass through the center of the circle so in this question you can see that in the given in the given figure x y and x dash y dash x y and x dash y dash are parallel tangents these are parallel tangents that means p q is a diameter that means p q is a diameter why because p point of contact q point of contact then p q is the diameter and you can see it's passing through o am i clear children if tangents are parallel then if you join the points of contact it will be the diameter is that fine yes all right so that means it's 90 here and 90 here all right um in the given figure x y and x dash y dash are two parallel tangents to a circle with center o and another tangent ab and another tangent ab another tangent ab with point of contact c with point of contact c intersecting xy intersecting xy that is this is xy it intersects xy at a and x dash y dash at b so prove that aob is equal to 90 degrees aob this one this angle is 90 degrees Are we all there? Thirteen students. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Okay, I'm just winding up with this one, children. Yeah. So I'll just tell you the information given again. Uh, in this figure, x y and x dash y dash are two parallel tangents to the circle. The point of contact of x y is P, and x dash y dash is Q. So we know that. PQ is the diameter. It passes through O, not because of that. Even if this O was not marked, we know that PQ is the diameter. Even if O was not given, supposing, still PQ is the diameter. Okay. Then they are talking about a third tangent AB. There is another one more tangent. Not only XY and X dash Y dash are tangents. There is another tangent AB. You can see here. There is another tangent AB. This other tangent AB, the point of contact is C. The third tangent, the point of contact is C. That third tangent, it intersects XY at A, and it intersects X dash Y dash at B. That's what is given at B. Now, given this, we need to prove that this angle is equal to 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so construction join OC, join OC. Now, as we did in this sum, the last one, the thirteenth one. In the thirteenth one, you remember I. Uh, this is how we discussed. We said uh, OB is the uh, line segment joining the uh, central and the external point. So we proved that these two triangles are congruent to each other. This is the line segment joining the center and the external point. So on either sides we have two triangles. We prove that those two triangles are congruent to each other. In the same way here, in the same way here, 
O Y. O Y is a line segment joining the not O Y. Sorry, O A. O A is the line segment joining the uh, center and the external point. Here we have two triangles. Prove that they are congruent to each other. Similarly, O B. O B. Center external point B. Prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So once you prove that these triangles are congruent from from this from the congruency of these two triangles, you will get that this angle is equal to this angle. Angle one is equal to angle two. And from the con congruency of the uh, from of uh, these two triangles, you will get angle three is equal to angle four. So now we know that uh, um, this one POQ is a straight line. We know that POQ is a straight line because it's a diameter. So angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four is equal to 180. Because it's straight line. POQ is a straight line. And on the straight line, we have all these four angles. On the straight line, we have these four angles. See a POQ. This is POQ. On POQ, we have angle one here. Two, okay, sorry. Two here, three here, and four here. On the straight line, they're not angles around a point. POQ is a diameter and on the diameter we have angle 1, 2, 3, 4 like this. So the sum of all the angles, the, all the four angles is 180 degrees. Because they lie on the straight line. Now, but we know that angle 1 is equal to 2. So instead of 1, you can say angle 2. And we also know that angle 4 is equal to 3, congruency. So this is 3. So you'll get twice of angle 2 plus twice of angle 3 is equal to 180. Two common. Angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 180. 180 by 2. So angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 180 by 2, 90 degrees. 2 plus 3 is 90, meaning angle AOB is equal to 90 degrees. 2 plus 3 is nothing but AOB. That's why we removed 1 and 4. We didn't want 1 and 4. We wanted only 2 and 3. So construction will be joint OC. This is the line segment joining the center and the external point. Show that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Again, this is the line segment joining the center and the external point. Show that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So you will get angle 1 is equal to angle 2 CPCT. Angle 3 is equal to angle 4 CPCT. Now this PO, POQ is a straight line because diameter. So the sum of all the four angles on the straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 180. But 1 and 2 are equal. So you can remove this and say angle 2. And CPCT, we also have angle 4 is equal to angle 3. Angle 4 is equal to angle 3. So twice of angle 2 plus 3 is equal to 180. Angle 2 plus 3 is equal to 180 by 2, 90 degrees. Which means angle AOB is equal to 90. Fine, children? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So uh, if we have uh, an exam tomorrow, we will not have the regular class uh, by today maximum by today or tomorrow very soon in the morning. I'll let you know about that. Uh, someday we will not have a class. Monday, yeah, we'll have the uh, uh, session on circles Monday, Tuesday morning classes we'll have. But Thursday, Sunday evening classes next week we will not have. OK, children. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. You may leave the call. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, children. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, children. Ma'am? Yes, Rajan.